People pay money to see me in a 20 by 20 ring. Wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of the 20 by 20 Ring Crew. I'm Matt, as always, alongside with my partner Joe. What up? And we are here to talk some more wrestling for your listening pleasure. Uh, as always, we got wrestling in the background. We are actually watching, I think this might be the first time for the show, watching something live as it's happening. Second time. Second time? Yeah, first time was uh, New Japan in... Uh... Oh, that was the Strong Style, right? Yeah, Strong, strong Style. Strong Style Evolved. Um, we we're watching Ring of Honor Best in the World 2018. It's happening live on the uh, Ring of Honor streaming service, Honor Club. If you don't have it, you can get it through us through 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash honor club. Or, I'm already promoting her over here. <laughs> we You can also get it through uh, Fight. If you just want to get, uh, you don't want to do the honor club subscription, go through Fight. Get it through us. If yeah. you sign up with us through Fight TV and you're a new subscriber, you will actually get $20 of oh, free credit $20 now. $20 free credit now. Do that at 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash fight. That's F-I-T-E. I do I do this for a reason. Again, the hashtag support professional wrestling. That's what we're doing. That's what we hope you're doing as well. But you want to know who doesn't support professional wrestling? I want to know who doesn't know? support professional Some, wrestling. A guy by the name of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. <laughs> See what I did there? I love it when a plan comes together. So two weeks ago in our in our episode, we we talked about Madison Square Garden and the fact that Ring of Honor was going to do a show at the World Famous Arena, as it's called, and it is World Famous Arena, Madison Square Garden, and how big for professional wrestling that would be. Seeing that that somebody other than WWE would be headlining that venue, and this is this has nothing to do with the fact that Madison Square Garden and WWE are kind of in a bad place right now, mainly because WWE has pretty much neglected them and chose to go with Barclays, a newer, bigger arena and probably cheaper. I don't, yeah, I would imagine so. Yep. And so Ring of Honor books this show, and. Within a week after we released that episode, if that... Yeah, not even a full week. We read the news that Vince put the kibosh to that. He pulled a trump card on them, and that that show is now not going to happen, at least not in Madison Square Garden. As it stands, yeah, it won't be at uh, Madison Square Garden, and the show is going to go on... Uh, Joe Coff from Ring of Honor, although he's not saying much, he he has confirmed one way or another that the show's still taking place, and part of the reason it has not, uh, or it it has like the kibosh has been put on it was because the show was going to run the weekend of WrestleMania. So could you picture that for a minute? A huge Ring of Honor. Show whether it be on pay per view or not, um, happening the weekend of WrestleMania, practically right there. Yeah, right in the vicinity of WrestleMania. Not only that, but you're also talking about the the venue that is synonymous. I mean, New York is synonymous with WWE. That's that's where the that company became the household name that it is today. And it came by selling out Madison Square Garden for for decades. And here you are, you're at what I believe would be 34, WrestleMania 34, New York. You know, it's a big homecoming. Yeah, I, technically it's going to be in New Jersey at MetLife Stadium. Go Giants. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's still New York. It's still, anytime they go and do a show, it's like a homecoming for them. Because they are synonymous with... with 
New York. WWE is synonymous with New York. And here comes Ring of Honor, who you can already rest assured, even before this Madison Square Garden fiasco, they were going to do a show in New York. They always do uh, in the same area as WrestleMania. Most, a lot of companies do that now. And that's one thing, but you're talking about the venue that put WrestleMania or WWE on the map. On the map, You know, yeah. the, the very first WrestleMania was at Madison Square Garden. You, didn't you talk about the 10th anniversary, Madison Square Garden. The 20th anniversary, Madison Square Garden. And it's just, like, don't, don't tread on me kind of thing. You can't have this. I'll tell you what it is. You know what it is? It's territorial pissing. That's all it yeah, is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's all it is. You, you said it. You said it perfectly. This this show was going to happen in the vicinity of WrestleMania anyway. Yeah, it's just not happening at Madison Square Garden now, and that's because of Vince McMahon and it's it's the WWE's backyard. And hey, that's fine. Uh, it also came out in in the news. Uh, related to this that that show was and obviously still is going to be a co-branded Ring of Honor New Japan show so they will have New Japan talent on hand that would have been insanely huge for that to happen at Madison Square Garden so it's still going to be a great show oh yeah it's just going to be at a different venue and it it just sucks it sucks that uh, one, that it's not happening in there. And two, that Vince can go and just make a few phone calls and then it not happen. And here's the thing. For, for people that are that applaud this, because you guys do exist, unfortunately. <laughs> you, you know, good, good for WWE, good for Vince McMahon, you know, not letting these, these no-namers, as you, as you like to call them, the minor leaguers, you know, take over his venue, pretty much, is what they're calling it. Let's set the the record straight here. This is a major bummer for Ring of Honor, of course, but this doesn't this doesn't hurt them in a way that you guys think it does. It doesn't at all because the the show wasn't booked. No talent is being said over. We're not doing it here anymore. You don't have to. You know, you didn't sell any tickets because again, you're not booked yet. This is just the right now we're in the idea stage. Like, wouldn't it be cool if we sold we did Mass Square Garden? That's all they were at. So this doesn't hurt Ring of Honor. Again, it's a bummer because man, that would have been great to have Ring to have Mass Square Garden. But who it really hurts is Madison Square Garden. Because here they are, WrestleMania weekend, the biggest weekend of the year, and you don't have a wrestling show. Yeah, and they can't book they can't, they book, can't book anybody. And the only thing I the only thing I could say happens here is that Vince finds finds some way to throw a, an additional show into that arena for them for that weekend. They should do NXT there. They won't, but they should. They, they won't, but they should. They should. The Hall of Fame would would I guess somewhat suffice. Something, something, you know. Yeah, I, but you're you're right. They already have the deal with the Barclays Center, so right. they're already they've already booked that venue. The, the only it's, thing that I can su- suggest say to that though is that the Barclays Center, you know, you have NXT take over Brooklyn for SummerSlam weekend. It's going to happen this year. It's going to happen next year in 2019. You're going to be in New York twice. Then you're going for for WrestleMania and SummerSlam. I mean, just do NXT TakeOver in Madison Square Garden. Just, that's the reason why I say it, because you're already, you know, that's in March or April, so you're talking four or five months later, you're going to go back to New York, back to the Barclays. You know, why not just give it to the Garden for, for this one? I, well, you know what, let's... Uh... Let's just let's just go with some common sense here, and and I, and I'm, I know we'll not only get shit for saying this. Oh, we always get shit, <laughs> but fine. we'll we'll get shit for saying this. But uh, it's it's also kind of a no brainer to me anyway, and I'm sure you'll say the same thing once I tell you what I'm about to say. Okay. Why not work it out and bring over your brand spanking new NXT UK brand yeah. and run a fucking show at the Madison Square Garden? Why yeah. not? Why not? 
you know, you made a they made such a big deal about, and I'm sorry to any of our UK fans, the where they were at for the uh, takeover, not takeover, the UK tournament, uh, Royal Grand Hall or something like that. London, it's a pretty famous venue. Um, you know, you made a big deal about that. You made a big deal about where they were at in Blackpool last year. You know, here's a, a, a way to emphasize your UK talent. And you do it in, again, the world's most famous arena. That's what, again, that's what Madison Square Garden is called. And, and it is. I, I, I don't think you can go anywhere, anywhere, any fan base, any real fan base of wrestling fans in the world. And we're not talking about here in the United States. We're talking about in England, in Japan. They, it's like it's like the Tokyo Dome, again, not as big, but it's that prestige. Yeah, you know, you sold out the Garden. Absolutely. And that's that's a huge deal, and it sucks. It sucks that this venue, this prestigious venue, that they worked so hard to renovate, because again, it was an, it's an aging venue, and and it needed some TLC. They did all this. And they're not running shows. <laughs> I mean, as far as wrestling goes, I'm not talking about you know other stuff. I know the, like the Knicks and and the Rangers still play there, and that's fine and dandy. But you're not running wrestling shows because you went to the bigger arena that costs less money, and it's a shame, you know, because your WWE you have starting this month in June, because that's where we're still in as is, as of this recording. We now have five. Count it. Five brands that are you claim are individual brands. You have the Raw brand. You have the SmackDown brand. 205 Live is its own brand now. It's not affiliated with Raw anymore other than guys maybe wrestling on dark matches or, or the main event TV show that's now international only. Although you can still catch it on Hulu. NXT, own brand. NXT UK, own brand. There's five opportunities you know, okay, take out Raw and SmackDown because of WrestleMania. You got three opportunities still to put a show in the fucking garden. <laughs> do it. There's no reason why you not do it. Plus, you have a Hall of Fame that you're still going to do. Don't just say, hey, look, we got it at one on, on Ring of Honor because you didn't screw them over. Yeah, sc- yeah that show's still happening. <laughs> They're still going to make money. They're still going to sell tickets. They're still going to sell subscriptions. You didn't. You didn't hurt them, because they didn't sell any tickets. Because this wasn't an actual thing yet. You hurt the garden, because now they can't book. It's a shame. It's a damn shame. You. you the, yeah, the garden is hurt. And he he keeps his stranglehold on. I'm sure. I'm sure his father's real proud of that one. He's <laughs> not. He's not booking at the garden. The, the the one place that the WWE should be booking. On a regular basis, really. I mean, I know they're doing a house show in, in August. Yeah. It's non televised. You know, I don't. I don't care if the Undertaker's going to be there. You know, he's he's a draw because he's, you know, for nostalgia purposes. But yeah, that, I don't, that, that, don't want to see him wrestle. Who the hell gives a shit? Who gives yeah. a shit at this point? I don't want to see him wrestle. He can't wrestle anymore. Yeah, there's, there's there comes a point in every person's uh, life where you just you don't got it anymore. You just don't. He, he don't got it. And that's not that's not, that's not a big deal. You know what would be a big deal is bringing in newer talent to the garden, and and starting new memories and new legacies at the garden. The way that you, you know that that place defined guys like Bruno San Martino and Bob Backlund, to guys like, dare I say it, Hulk Hogan, and <laughs> I could be fair, you know. Those guys, those guys headlined the Garden. They became names because they were able to headline the Garden. And, you know, now what if we, what if we got guys like Alistair Black and Adam Cole, you know, Ricochet, Velveteen Dream? What if they have the opportunity to headline the Garden? It's a big deal, people. Like it's such a huge deal. And I just, I'm curious what kind of like contract that they have that he can pull this kind of shit and say well, maybe we maybe, can't do it. maybe he threatened to take away that house show in August <sighs> take it you know <laughs> take it cuz 
I would take that risk. I understand it's it's a risk because you're tell, you are talking about a smaller company in WWE, but at least this way you get some exposure. Absolutely, you know, some international exposure again. You know, the only people that are going to see this house show are the people that are going to be in the garden, and that's that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not enough. You have all this opportunity to to showcase this arena, and you have the means to do it with your network, and you're not going to do it. It's like when we talked about Starcade. I was going to say, maybe that's what they're doing with that house show in August. Maybe it'll be another old WCW pay-per-view that uh, namesake, you know, yeah. used that for that purpose and that purpose only. If it's August. I mean, what do you got, like Road Wild? Hogwash. I can see them doing it. Yeah, you know. I can see them going to Sturgis. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I've been dealing with for, for a while now. Is uh, these guys pretty much telling me, like, haha, they got one over on your, your minor leaguers. And uh, they didn't. They you, didn't. You and, I, the, you and I this past week have both had uh, our own respective... Uh, I'm in, exhausted. In, internet... Uh, <laughs> Encounters with with hardcore brainwashed WWE fans, and it's it's a sad state of affairs. I I myself got into one with a guy about Jay Lethal, and he was talking I love about this story. He was talking about how Jay Lethal has basically lost his his chance at working for the WWE, and he's going to be stuck in Ring of Honor forever, according to this guy. And he made it sound like such a bad thing. So I asked just a simple question. You make it sound so bad being stuck in Ring of Honor for the rest of your career. I don't understand. And he replied with something to the effect of, (laughs) uh, you know, he changed his look. He no longer has the dreads. And he's not going to be, like, WWE is not going to give him a chance now. And so I had to think, like, did he just... Did he just make the argument that Jay Lethal isn't worth a shit to WWE? Or, or let's face it, anyone for that matter, because he no longer has a certain fucking hairstyle? Because he's bald. Or, or facial hair? Like he used to? Like, I didn't... I, I couldn't fucking fathom it in my mind. That's like the ultimate stretch. You're trying to find an argument. And so I, I replied to the guy, and I'm like... Hair aside, <laughs> let's talk about the way Jay Lethal is working right now. And, we, you know, we went into it. And ultimately, the argument ended with me shutting him the hell up because I asked him a question. And, and I think it, the reason I bring it up is because it's relevant to your, your internet encounters as well. And I'm mm. sure a lot of other people's. So here yeah. it goes. You have these WWE fans, okay? I don't have nothing against you. I love that you watch any kind of wrestling. But you you have these WWE fans who will sit there and for for our intent and purposes, we're going to use Jay Lethal and the Young Bucks because that's who came up this week. Yeah. So with Jay Lethal and the Young Bucks, clearly they are up there in the way of caliber talent. They are household names to every Everybody else in in who watches professional wrestling who doesn't have a closed mind and only watches the WWE. Right. So you you WWE fans, like the guy I had an argument with, you want Jay Lethal over there. You want the Young Bucks over there. But right now they're fucking horse shit. How does that make any sense? How does that make any fucking sense? If they're horse shit right now, why do you want them to become a WWE roster member? Yeah. Think about that, folks. Think about that. That, that's that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. None. If these guys are just are these if these guys are minor leaguers and they're horse shit and they're fucking uh, you know troublesome jobbers, whatever you want to call spot them, spot monkeys, spot monkeys. Yeah. If if they're if if you keep throwing out negative connotations about guys like this. But you want them to come to your favorite brand? What does that say? You know, other other than you don't know jack shit about professional wrestling. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, it's very frustrating. <laughs> so the Young Bucks again. We talked about this on a previous show, previous episode. 
The Young Bucks contract ends in December. I set the record straight. They are not going to be at SummerSlam. <laughs> it's, it's just not. I'm. I would. I, I would it, unless SummerSlam moves to January. Yeah, I mean, that's a possibility. Slam, yeah, which summer are we talking about? Because it ain't <laughs> here in the states. It's certainly not going to be in Brooklyn. Especially seeing that SummerSlam takes place a week or two before All In. It's it's not happening. So stop. I, I've just been hearing this argument that, oh, they're going to come. They're for sure coming. So I finally just asked, like, oh, do you do you have their number? <laughs> do, 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 they, do they they call you and say, hey, random WWE fan, we're coming to, to WWE. Like, do you, you can bet, bet on it. They didn't say that. I, I, nor am I saying they're not coming, but we don't know. We don't know, so shut up. Yeah. But, you know, I hear all the time, when especially with the Young Bucks, that they they're gonna come because it's time for them to make some real money and to become household names. I was dumbfounded by that that people are, are that stupid because again, I bring up All In. I don't care that All In is not WrestleMania quality. I don't give a shit about that because mainly All In was paid for by three fucking guys. <laughs> Can WWE say that? No, they're a publicly traded company. Try again. Three guys, three guys, spent their own money to rent out a building and sell tickets. Yeah. Period. You don't do that if you're not making money. If you don't have money to spend, you're not going to spend that kind of dough and take that much of a risk. Because All In was a huge risk. Hint the name, All In. Again, they funded it along with Cody, Cody Rhodes to do this show and obviously it's become a huge success well before it ever even happens and it's 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 only going to look up from here now we look at household names now are they household names like hulk hogan or the rock or triple h no they're not and that's that's fine but i consider household names as people that no matter what venue they're in, no matter what country they're in, no matter what promotion they're competing for that particular evening or show, if they're a, a big draw, they're a household name. And the Young Bucks, whether it's Ring of Honor or New Japan Pro Wrestling or Pro Wrestling Guerrilla or anybody else all over the world, wherever they go, they're money. They are money. People want to see them, no matter where they're at in the card, that crowd is going nuts for them. And, on top of all that, I don't think there's anybody in the business right now that's selling merchandise the way that those two are. Oh, that's a definite, oh my god. And that the, inc- amount of, the amount of money they make from merchandise alone is fucking crazy. And that includes anybody in the WWE. So, for you wrestling fans, you WWE fans that are claiming that they're going to come to make a fuck ton of money and become household names, you can fucking suck it because they are already (laughs) doing it. They They are already household names and they're making a shit ton of money. They will make a shit ton of money in WWE as well. There's no doubt about that. But that is not going to be a selling point for them because they're already doing it. You're already doing it. And not only that... But you got to take a step back, and, and, and they're not dumb guys by any means. But what kind of deal would they have to make? Because if you're selling Young Bucks merchandise with a WWE logo on, well, how much percentage are you actually getting of that now? And are you going to make the same amount of money that you're making by having a pro wrestling tees shop? And, you know, or selling on Ring of Honor Wrestling or the Hot Topic you know, or anything else? You know, pop vinyls. You know, this is the second run of Young Bucks pop vinyls with a WWE logo. How much money are you making off of that? You're going to make money, but is it going to be the same? It's not. Nowhere near, no, nowhere close. That's the short answer. Yeah, yeah. nowhere that's, close. That's it. So, that's what you and I have been dealing with. <laughs> and I, I'm sorry to complain, ladies and gentlemen, but I, I we have to vent. And... It leads to the ultimate 
bullshit artists and bullshit remarks that I've been hearing on on social media lately. And again, we beg for you to do this every uh, every episode. So <laughs> we ask for this. But um, I talked to you about this before the show. You you didn't you didn't hear about it. So I told you about the Paul Heyman rant that took place uh, earlier this month in, in June. And it involved Brock Lesnar's stat- status at, at SummerSlam. And I was trying to speed through this uh, part. So Extreme Rules, which is taking place in July, was set to have a multi-man match with the winner facing Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. On episode of Raw, when Kurt Angle announced it, he announced that Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley were going to be a part of the match. The very next week, he said he had a major announcement regarding it. Long story short, Brock Lesnar, through way of a uh, loophole, backed out of the contract. And that was on an episode of Raw. Two days prior to that, on uh, Facebook, Paul Heyman released a very long rant that I'm not even going to bother reading because it's really long. <laughs> but basically, to sum it up, he said that nobody in the WWE is on Brock Lesnar's level. That they cannot draw. That he assuming that Brock Lesnar will not compete in the WWE and defend that title until somebody can prove that they can draw uh, at the level of Brock Lesnar as far as money goes, um, as far as pay per view matches go. That Roman Reigns has proven time and time again that he can't do that, and that Bobby Lashley is looking is is doing nothing more than looking for that once in a lifetime payday. For all you fans out there that are, are, are listening to me, like, what's, what's your point? Like, is this is completely a work. You're right, it is. But there's fans out there, and there's a lot of them out there, that think that this is a legit thing. And that Paul Heyman is absolutely correct. Because according to a lot of the WWE Universe, Paul, excuse me, Brock Lesnar is the guy... That you have to go through in order to get over in the WWE. So I, I know what your response is, but like, doesn't that just make your stomach sick? I'm sorry. All I heard was that the Young Bucks are going to be facing Brock Lesnar <laughs> yeah. pretty soon at yeah. SummerSlam. <laughs> yeah, the Young Bucks and, and Kenny Omega is going to be the special guest referee. Yep. That's how. You, that's how you get that's over. That's how in you these get business. over. Jesus. Because Christ. because being suplexed by this out of shape. Hillbilly for eight <laughs> minutes is getting you over. When earlier this month in June we saw two guys go at it for over an hour and give their hearts and soul to to this to this fucking company to this business, and that's not getting over. Jeez. That's not getting over. <laughs> it's sickening. It's sickening to me that there's people out there that believe this shit, but they exist. They exist, unfortunately. So what do you think about this Brock Lesnar situation? I mean, what's what's your what's your take on it? Uh, it's it's obviously a work. Yeah, it's, oh, it, of course. It, for those of you who don't agree with me, I'm I'm sorry, you're wrong. <laughs> you, you just are. It's it's a work. It's it's meant for you. Uh, it's meant for you to relish in the in the notion of Brock Lesnar being this dastardly heel. This is what was agreed upon with the company. Let him do shit. Let him and Paul Heyman do shit like this and say shit like this just to piss fans off so that he comes across as that much more of an asshole. That's great. He, it's a heel thing to do. I'm all for it. He needs to be the heel in, in whatever match he's going to be because the, the more heat he has on him, the better that baby face is going to look when they ultimately beat him for that championship at SummerSlam. Yeah. Which, and for right now, for all intents and purposes, we're hearing that it's still going to be Roman Reigns that takes that title. Now, you had brought up a, a, a situation before we started recording mm-hmm. concerning that match where uh, Braun Strowman gets involved and you, you have it set up to where Brock Lesnar becomes the ultimate heel. And then you have Roman Reigns be the ultimate babyface, whatever that means these days. Because let's face it, Roman Reigns has been through the ringer on both sides of the the wrestling persona. Uh, yes, 
rainbow there, but you had said uh, those two fight it out, beat the ever living shit out of each other. Roman wins the title, and everybody rejoices. Yes, Brock Lesnar's finally given up the belt, and he can go on and do his UFC UFC thing. Excuse me, and then. We see Braun Strowman come out, the monster in the bank. He brings the briefcase, he cashes in, and he beats Roman. One, two, three. I gotta say, that sounds pretty entertaining for WWE shit. Sure, yeah. I'm definitely not gonna lie about that, but um, whether that happens still remains to be seen. Uh, how many times have we, how many times have we been fed the idea and the notion of Roman Reigns vying for a title and supposedly winning it? And then it doesn't happen. <laughs> WrestleMania. Yeah. So, again, it's it's all rumor for right now. Would I like to see that? Yeah, I would love... At this point, I don't care what the fuck happens with that title. Other than it become off of Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I, I, am, I, am I a huge fucking uh, mark for Braun Strowman? I hope Absolutely not. not. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I think if I were, you would not have me doing the show. <laughs> And we're all tied to our opinions, no matter how wrong they are. <laughs> opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I'm not hell-bent on Braun Strowman happening. I'm not sure. hell-bent on Roman Reigns happening. I just don't want point, Brock no, Lesnar yeah. to have it. That, that, that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, you, anybody that's going to show up every single week... At this point, I don't care if it's fucking Michael Cole as champion. Like, any, yeah, at, at least good. we know he would show up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the the guy with uh, with with no chin, he's back. Uh, oh, WWE. Ellsworth. Yeah, James Ellsworth. He, did, did did he bring his intergender? He, he did not, but he has an intergender match coming up on the next episode of SmackDown against Asuka. So maybe because he's still a champ. He's still he's a still champ. A champ. So, uh, but yeah, he's back in WWE. Let him be champion. I don't. I don't care. I really don't care. It's anybody else other than Brock Lesnar? And look, it's not because I bought into this heelish, dashly he could do whatever he wants thing. I, I look. He. I've known this about Brock Lesnar uh, back when he left the company in 2004. He's a piece of shit that only cares about himself, and for some reason. That turns Vince McMahon on. That turns him on to no end. Because they're two peas in a pod. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if he had it his way, Brock would be running this company instead of H. F. And they would be married. And they'd be married. They'd probably have children by now. Yeah. I, Vince Lesnar's. Oh, God. Brock McMahon. Like, yeah, I, we would have to delete those those, those <laughs> things. It's, it, it's, it sucks. It sucks that that... Here we are, a year and a half of this bullshit rain, and I have to listen to people say, oh, but he's getting people over. You have to show up. <laughs> you have to actually compete in the ring. It's just, it's not the same thing. You know, you look at, again, Kazuchika Okada, and dare I put Kazuchika Okada and Brock Lesnar in the same sentence, but <laughs> look at those reigns. Kazuchika Okada held on to that title for over 700 days, and he defended that damn thing. And if he wasn't defending that title, he was still competing. He was still competing, yes. There's there's a difference between just doing it to make to, to earn a paycheck and doing it because you love the fucking business. And in, in the case of Kazuchika Okada, that man ain't hurting for dough. He's do he's making a fuck ton of money. He's he's a household name, whether you believe me or not. CM Punk, because he's stick with WWE, held on that title for four hundred days. Defended it every single month for the most part at a pay per view. Again, there's a difference between giving a shit. You're not getting anybody over by beating them in a Nine, eight, ten minute match, or staying at home on your acres and acres of land hunting deer. Yeah, you're not doing anybody any favors besides yourself. And for those that are claiming otherwise, I'm pulling your wrestling card. You, you just you don't understand how this business works, and you need to go back to the basics because <laughs> this is not. I mean, shit. As much as I hate Hulk Hogan, the guy showed up. Yeah. 
He showed up. The work. He didn't work very well, but he worked. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> I cannot wait till we talk more about Hogan. That's yeah, that's coming soon. That's coming soon. But yeah, that's that's where we're at. You know, it's we're at the point now. You know, summer's obviously here. You know, we're talking about SummerSlam more and more, and all these other great events. And I just it it it, it's, it sticks at me that we have we have to deal with this shit, and we could easily just walk away, and perhaps we should, but. I, I think there's a part of me that, that has this like responsibility that I need to teach at least try to teach reach out to somebody and teach them something. Now I know what you know like my my fourth grade teacher felt like. Where <laughs> it's like just pay attention. It's you know? it's, it's been like four days since uh, I had my altercation online and I, nothing. I've still got nothing from that guy. That's usually what happens once you once you start spewing out facts. You uh, you just get um, either laugh emojis because they don't have a response. And they I didn't know. I didn't even get that. Or yeah. or you don't get a response at all. <laughs> I, I get a lot. I get some laugh emojis. It's usually half and half. The laugh emojis are just like you know, ha ha, you you you're stupid and you know whatever. But uh, you know, you're not really coming at me with any facts of your own. So it's not about winning or losing. But you know, I kind of won that argument, I guess. <laughs> Though I don't feel like I have. I've gotten nowhere, but but yeah, I, it's again the Brock Lesnar thing. It's a complete work. It's not a very good one because you know there's also rumors of well he's talking about not competing at SummerSlam at all, and that he's going to take the Universal Title and go somewhere else. He's going to go find the Young Bucks. He's going to find the Bucks. <laughs> You don't got to go far. I mean, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're in the minor leagues, but they're everywhere. Um, and again, this is another one of those things where I just I didn't get because where, where where the hell would you go? And the only thing that I thought of, and you mentioned earlier, was the UFC. And that's a whole another can of worms. It is, and you know what I. As, as as much as uh, as interesting as that would be for like a cross promotional thing, let's face it. I don't know how Vince McMahon feels about it, but I'm pretty sure Dana White does not want wrestler professional wrestlers near his his brand. I mean, he. It, it, I I understand CM Punk. That's that's one thing. He just, CM Punk is a professional wrestler turned. UFC fighter, right? Or, there's, or there's a difference. With that. There's a difference with that. Same you, thing with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, when Brock Lesnar uh, first came. Again, he he's he turned legitimate UFC fighter, mixed right. martial artist, uh, however you want to refer to him. But it's not going to be the same thing. If Brock Lesnar shows up with that Universal Title at a UFC event, it it does nothing for the UFC. May, maybe make them look a little stupid. To be yeah. honest with you. It, it it does everything for the WWE. It gives it gives those same guys that want Jay Lethal with dreads, <laughs> you know, in in their product. Even though he's a minor leaguer, it gives those the people like that like the the fucking confidence. Like yes, you, you know this guy. He's the fucking beast. He you know he whatever whatever you want to call him. Yeah. Unfortunately, here's 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 the thing. Here's my my take on this. So, it's okay to have, you know, these, these cross-promotional, especially in the different types of sports or sports entertainment. You know, WWE, of course, is talked about on, even on, on ESPN now. That's, I think that's been over a year since that's been, maybe two years since that's been a thing. And that's cool, fine and dandy, but that's still... Even though ESPN, which is a sports network, is talking about them, they talk. They have their own page on the ESPN website. The sp- big, big shows like WrestleMania uh, are featured on the uh, on Sports Center and stuff like that. That's fine and dandy, but it's still treated as its own thing. So when you have a guy like let's let's say 
let's say you well, well actually we don't have to you, you bring in Ronda Rousey Ronda Rousey coming to WWE although it got coverage and again coverage is whether it's good or bad it's still coverage nonetheless it was very much a she's no longer an MMA fighter she's now doing fantasy sports they're not calling it that but that's how it gets treated so when you start taking somebody else like let's say they take you know they swapped and said or Natalia for example is coming to UFC to do uh, you know a, a, a segment with let's say Holly Holmes because she knocked out Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey. and they do, they do this bit you lose faith from the UFC crowds and well is this a legitimate fight now yeah all that credibility goes out yeah. the, out the window, you and, know, and and now you have professional wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's that's something that I guarantee you, Dana White doesn't want. He yeah. doesn't want that. This is a legit sport. You know, I have my feelings, and I'm not going to get into that about the how legitimate MMA really is. There's parts of it where I feel like it's professional boxing. Um, yeah, that's that's a whole other. But that's a whole other yeah. topic, and I'm not going to get into that. But with that being said, it's for all intents and purposes, it's a legit sport, and professional wrestling isn't. It's predetermined. These guys are athletes. These men and women are athletes. And anyone that says otherwise doesn't know what they're talking about. But again, it's predetermined. That's the major difference. That's the major no-no in sports, and. You can't have that. You can't lose that faith. You know, UFC is not hurting for for fan base. They're they're doing very well for themselves. But if you, you start playing with fire, well, you can start burning down that very foundation that got brought you from you know from pretty much near death as far as UFC is concerned. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. For Brock Lesnar to come in, you can you can go to a UFC show and carry around that title. There's nothing wrong with walking around with that WWE Universal title. People know you're a WWE Universal Champion. That's one thing. But when you start antagonizing and do a storyline with it, then then you're you're opening up a whole can of worms for UFC that I I don't think would be smart for 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 you them to do. And Dana White's obviously a very smart man, whether you like him or not. I, don't, I just don't see it being a thing. No. And so, therefore, I ask the question again, where the hell do you go with that title? Again, this is a work, but it's not a very good work. Because it leaves just, I, I so many I, questions. I don't want to I don't want to go this route, but let's let's just for for the sake of saying it, let's let's just run down the other brands. Does he yeah. go to SmackDown? Is it that is it that sort of a thing? Does he go to 205 Live? <laughs> Does he go to NXT? Like please stay away from NXT. Yeah, and see that's why I am <laughs> I'm afraid to say it. Like I don't want him to show up in NXT. Yeah, don't touch NXT. No. I like NXT still. Don't don't take don't take the only thing that's good as far as WWE is concerned. Don't take that away from me. So yeah, it, it, I I really don't get that that part of Heyman's rant. I really don't. I, I don't. I don't either. Uh, you know, Paul Heyman is such a complex guy for me because one of the smartest wrestling minds in the world, and I don't know what the hell he's talking about when it comes to Brock Lesnar. I mean, I know he's a paycheck. I know you've answered that question for me. He's a paycheck. I get that, but still, it's like it, he's a hell of a promoter. That's what he's doing. I just, I just don't get this one. Um, 20x20 Wrestling Talks, where you can find us on Facebook. If you Give us your opinion on this whole situation. Facebook.com slash groups slash 20x20 talk. And for now, we're going to contemplate this even more and try to scratch our heads and uh, pay some bills in the process. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Ebates. Do you do online shopping at all? Excellent. If you do, you can help support the show and save some money while you purchase stuff online. Have access to over 10,000 different shops online, including major brands such as Nike, GameStop, Uber, Burger King, and just about any other online store that you can think of, including Amazon. Each purchase you make helps support the show and saves you money. Accrue enough cash back and then cash out and receive your big fat paycheck in the mail. 
from Ebates. Take the time, support the heels, support the baby faces, support your 20 by 20 ring crew, and be like the boys. Save some money. 20x20crew.com slash podcast slash Ebates. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for hanging in there with us as we took a break and paid some bills. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you supported the show, and thank you as always. Thank you again. Um, I'm back here with Matt, and we just got done ranting and raving about uh, Madison Square Garden and Ring of Honor and all that mess. As we sit here and watch 2018 Best of the World Ring of Honor, as it happens live, we're watching the main event right now between Dalton Castle Marty the Villain Skrull and the one and only Cody Rhodes. Pretty interesting match so far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's As Cody gets hit with the crossroads. <laughs> it's It's been kind of an interesting week in, in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, wow, that was... That was unexpected. That was unexpected. Yeah. Uh, we won't spoil that for you folks. So, um, it's been interesting this week... In professional wrestling, there was a there was two comments by two two top guys in the industry that really struck a chord with a lot of fans, and I definitely wanted to cover this as soon as possible. I want to get your take. Okay, I haven't I haven't talked to wrestling with you uh, uh, in a good week, so it's a long time for us. Yeah, it is a long time for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna go we're gonna go with. Um, Daniel Bryan first. Okay. So Daniel Bryan was on a podcast called The Gorilla Position. Okay. James James Delo, who uh, who hosts the show, floated the idea of a like a long a long term build to build up Daniel Bryan versus The Miz at WrestleMania. So keep in mind we are June 2018 right now. Okay. Yeah. Th- at the very end of June. James Delos pitching the idea of, hey, what do you think about setting up for Daniel Bryan versus The Miz at WrestleMania in April or late March of 2019? And <laughs> Daniel Bryan was quoted as saying, I am definitely up for it. My question, you ask me that question, I will answer it with a question. Do you trust the WWE with telling that story from now until WrestleMania 35, as he laughs, like, what in the last several years has shown to you that something like that is possible here? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and then, to make it even worse, Brie Bella, who is married to Daniel Bryan, yes, automatically shoots down the notion, and she's like, uh, actually, she shoots down the notion of Daniel Bryan being the key to that happening. Like, he would be the catalyst for that situation to happen. She shoots it down right away on the podcast podcast and says, Yeah, if something accidentally happens, and she laughs, and yeah, they've got no control over it, it's possible that it can happen. So... <laughs> I think that's the most amusing part about all this to me is yeah. like even Brie Bella can see like it's just not fucking possible and if it is possible it's going to happen by like pure sheer fucking luck basically. What are your thoughts? I agree with them. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's just a, it's a fucking shame. It, it is. It is people within your own company have zero faith in you. Uh, I mean it's very much become like TNA like where Storylines get scrapped. It's out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to Danny Bryan and the Miz, I, I think they would get lucky only because, and I and I will give credit where credit is due here because the Miz of all people, I, and this is out of sheer luck too, <laughs> continue to antagonize the fact that, uh, you know, the Danny Bryan Miz storyline started way back in like 2010. For you know, during the NXT when it was like a, a game show or whatever you want to call it, not game show, but whatever you want to call it, and it's always kind of been like the thing where it was Daniel Bryan versus The Miz, and they were arch rivals, whether we liked it or not, and it just kept, it was like dumb luck, you know. 
He even when the before Daniel Bryan was cleared, it was the Miz that was still doing the the yes kicks. Calling, I think he was just calling the Miz kicks or whatever. Uh, do you know mocking the yes chants and all that stuff, and it just the crowd just get was eating it and eating it. And actually, one of the best things that they had going for a while before they cut it, and obviously you know they're not going to do it anymore because of two or five live, but. They had that show, Talking Smack, which was a pretty entertaining show for what it was. And The Miz would be on there quite a bit. And again, he'd run down, verbally run down Daniel Bryan. And I was like, (laughs) even though Daniel Bryan was not medically cleared and wasn't in the forecast, at least us as as the audience didn't feel it was, and it it continued to work. So the fact that the audience is so hell-bent on having this happen, I don't think they have to try that hard. So when it comes to Daniel Bryan versus The Miz at WrestleMania, I don't think they'll have a problem, but I'm not giving the WWE writing team any credit on that. That's that's solely on mainly The Miz. Again, I have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, but then and also Daniel Bryan for, for carrying it on too. But because of that and because of the WWE Universe wanting it, it, it'll happen even with a inconsistent writing team. Because they're absolutely right. They can't hold down rivalries the way that they used to. It, it it'll, it'll happen, and it'll happen much sooner. That, that, I agree. I, I'm really predicting this for SummerSlam. Yeah. To be honest that, with you. That, yeah, that seems about right. Uh, that, that they can manage. But letting it go all the way through to WrestleMania... No, they're, they're, you don't think they can hold it even w- even with everything they, the they don't. Done. They don't have the writing talent or the no, fucking patience. They, you're right, they don't. And and that I think that's the most important part of it is patience. Yeah, and, that's and, true. And a lot of WWE fans will sit there and say, "Yeah, that'd be cool as shit." But let's face it, there's other promotions out there doing long storylines, and you guys could give two shits. Mm. So, I you know, there's no pleasing. Yeah, like, you know, Kenny Omega's quest for the title. Yeah. O- <laughs> Okada's 700 plus days. Like... Just to name two. You know? You know name a few. Yeah, it's it's going to happen. It's going to happen much sooner. And it's a damn shame. It really is. Because it could be something so special. My... The way I would book that would be... Don't force it. Let it happen naturally. Let mm. the Miz run his mouth like he does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then just have Daniel Bryan react to it whenever he does. Because clearly it's not an all-the-time thing. He peppers it here and there. And so let it happen that way. Let it happen naturally and organically. And then over those periods of months, just let it slowly build up more and more and more. Then you do have a proper build-up for WrestleMania. There's, there's tons of ways that I'm envisioning it in my head and I'm not saying they're good but that leads leads to my point or your point I should say of letting it just happen organically the way that The Miz was letting it happen organically during a time again when Daniel Bryan wasn't even on the active roster and you and I talked about this before Daniel Bryan versus The Miz is not a match we necessarily want to see I don't want to see that match you know but if if we're going to talk about storylines here and this is the WWE, and they're supposedly really good at it, then th- this is, like, the ultimate one to do. Because it's, it's, already, it's already detailed itself out there for you. It's like, it's like paint a picture, but it's a connect-the-dot picture. Like, <laughs> that's all you have to do is just connect the dots. They've already designed it for you. Just, you just have to know how to count. One goes to two, and two goes to three, and so on and so forth. If you can't figure that out, then, I mean, you're in trouble. But, again, Miz, Miz and, and, and Daniel Bryan, as far as the WWE Universe is concerned, that's a huge, huge WrestleMania draw, no matter our opinions on it or not. And it would be a shame if you did it at SummerSlam. And SummerSlam is a big uh, pay-per-view in its own right, but we're talking about WrestleMania moments here. If this is... I would build this up too, not necessarily for. You have to do it for storyline purposes, but this is it, the one and done, the the final showdown because they've competed against each other before. 
Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. And the way I, I would see it is Daniel Bryan finally exacting his revenge. Like, the way I would do it is you continue to have The Miz get over on Daniel Bryan and antagonize Daniel Bryan and continue to piss off all those Daniel Bryan fans to the point where you just want to see Daniel Bryan finally get his revenge on that smug, that smug heel. Yeah. Because that's what heels are supposed to do. It makes complete and perfect sense. So I would have him continue to do that. I, I would have... I would have Miz even every once in a while do the LaBelle lock or the Yes lock, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, do that every once in a while. You know, continue to do the Yes chance. All of that stuff. All of that. And eventually, they finally, they finally go at it. And Miz finally gets his. That's, to, honestly, that's a very basic babyface heel storyline like what I just did there isn't that complex it's not that's not a following contest match because it's like that's too basic it's too basic if you want to see what we're talking about there's actually a really good example that just happened recently so if you have the WWE network uh, go to the um, NXT TakeOver Chicago Mm -hmm. that happened this year 2018 and watch the match between Velveteen Dream and Ricochet. For it, many reasons. Yeah, for many reasons. In that match, you had Velveteen Dream continually a- antagonizing Ricochet. Not just verbally, but like also trying to mimic his moves. And throughout that match, it just he gets getting that much more pissed off. Yeah. Um, excellent example of that. Obviously, a much more condensed version than what we're talking about because we're trying to book it all the way through WrestleMania. Yeah, but nonetheless, same thing. Same, just, same concept. A, yeah, same yeah. concept. What well, Miz has already been it, doing. Exactly, he's already been doing it. Just you just add that heel factor where he just keeps getting the best of Daniel Bryan. Yes. No pun intended. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and there you have it. it. It almost writes itself. And then if you got if you let them just do what they do, yeah, that is one confidence I have about the Miz. He, oh yeah, he, he he can definitely hold up that part of the bargain. The actual physical wrestling in the match that's something completely different. Than Subpar. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't have that confidence in him. Yeah, but he'll at least get them to the dance. So he's he's a great character. There's no doubt about it. He's a great character. He's he's great on the mic. He's great at being a smug prick that you just want to see his head smashed in. And that's his job. And he does a really good job at that He part. does it really, really well. Too well. Too well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Miz and Daniel Bryan aside, there's yes. uh, there's another comment that I want you to, to hear and I want your reaction to. So this, was, this happened after... Um, the New Japan Dominion show on June 9th. Okay. Uh, obviously, if you don't know already, Kenny Omega won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship from Kazuchika Okada after a 700-plus day run as champ. And one of the things Kenny Omega said in response to the situation, and I'm quoting him here, he says... But I'm serving this as a warning to all the domestic talent in New Japan. You guys have to step up your game. Because right now, you are not at our level. And I don't mean that as a negative comment. I want everyone to do their best. I'm just saying that we need to do the best that we can. And that what you're doing right now isn't enough. Now by him saying that, there wasn't only fans that took uh, issue with this. There were... Apparently other wrestlers. Okay. Um, none of who are named in this uh, this article I'm reading, but he says that, and you know, he, he clearly says he doesn't mean it uh, as a negative comment, but he did say it, and people did take it the wrong way. What say you? What do you say about Kenny Omega's comment about the New Japan roster, or at least the domestic part of the roster, getting their shit together? It's, it's interesting because... As far as New Japan Pro Wrestling is concerned, I think it goes without saying that 
they are, if they're not the best, in your opinion, they're up there in some of the best wrestling in the world. Not just in Japan, but in the world. As far as in ring, if you don't, if you don't believe this, you know they, they're the way, they're the much better talent uh, in ring than, let's say, a WWE, for example. If you don't believe that, then you don't need to listen to the rest of this. <laughs> that, that, that goes without saying, and that's I think that's you know for pe- most people in the WWE, that's fine. That's kind of that, that should be. But uh, going back to New, New, New Japan, it's it's intriguing because I, I watched something. It's, this takes place right after Dominion, and obviously the best match of the night for me, and I think for many people, was Kenny Omega versus Kazuchika Okada. But every match on that card, yet again, delivered in ways that you don't see happen on full cards. Every match was 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 standout. Yes, match, some matches stand out more than others, of course. But to say that they're not at that level that that they should be, they need to step it up. I'm all about getting better. You know, if you if you are at your A game, then get at your A plus game. If that's that's what you're referring to, but. To call out the roster, it seems, and I, whether it's meant to be negative or not, I can understand why some people can see it as it's kind of taking a shot. Because what exactly do you mean by that? Because you know, if you're somebody like Evil and Sonata, for example, you're already delivering A plus matches as it is, or at least A matches. You know, matches you had with the Young Bucks, great matches. You know the the match they had with Killer Elite Squad at at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. The art of selling was was there at its finest, and then for them to do the whole come back and win that match again, that's not easy to do. You know, we we talk about it before. Guys like in the junior heavyweight division, guys like uh, Rapunga 3K, where they've come. Guys like Jay White where he's come from and, and how he's been able to excel and get better and better and better. Juice Robinson, another one of those guys. And I'm naming guys, again, they're, 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 nobody was named, but I'm naming guys, for example. And everybody continues to get better and better and better and better. It doesn't mean that they're just not getting better at a, the, the rate that he wants them to get better at? Or, or, or what's... What's your take on this? Well, that first part of a statement, I, I deliberately said by itself. Mm. Because a few days later, he was doing press for the G1 special in San Francisco. Yeah. And by then... The July inter- 7th, by the way. Uh, July 7th. By then, the internet and other people have had time to react to it. And Kenny Omega realizes by then... People have overreacted, and they actually, some of them called him out as being racist. So he replied. Interesting. Okay? okay. So he replies with, how so exactly? And what's funny about this is the general feedback from the Japanese community is, Kenny, you're right. So it's so strange that I'm hearing all these English-speaking people, people from foreign countries, foreign countries tell me that I'm being a racist individual when all I'm doing is speaking the truth. And in a way, those comments were sort of kayfabe, if you will. I mean, you don't see how hard anyone's working. But I do, and I see it every day. I see it every time I go to the gym. The gym is myself, Michael Elgin, Juice Robinson. It's all foreigners. You never see any of the Japanese talent at the gym, with the exception of a couple guys. And when you're looking at guys that are eating food and dieting, it's always the foreigners who are trying harder. When you're looking at guys who are thinking outside the box to create something new and exciting for the brand, most of the time it's the foreigners because they're hungrier and they want it. And the Japanese talent is mostly just waiting for their turn. And I'm not saying that this is a racial thing whatsoever. It's just is what it is. And I couldn't help but notice that the guys that are absolutely killing it right now are mostly foreign talents. Why is that? I want everybody to do well. I want New Japan as a whole to do well. 
I want our team to be the best team in all of professional wrestling. I don't want to be a turn waiter. I don't want anyone to do that. I want everyone to want it. So if you want to know why I said those comments, that's why. So he goes on to explain himself, obviously. How do you feel about all that? Is he right? Do you feel the same way? I mean, as far as working out and and being in the gym, this is coming from a guy that doesn't go to the gym. (laughs) Doesn't work out. (laughs) Um, I'm a couch potato. Um, and I keep in, I keep in good enough shape because of my job, a very very physical job. So I, I you know I understand the importance of good cardio, good physique. And I'm not saying this is what he's saying at all, by any means. I, I think I think it goes without saying that it, it it starts and ends by the beginning and ending bell in in, in the match. If you're delivering great matches then obviously what you're doing is is working and although i i agree that he that if you got if you got guys that aren't working as hard in the gym and getting themselves you know ready for whatever it is then that's i i understand the gripe and i understand the the call out and the challenge more more or less but i still am not 100 percent sure what he where he's going at here i mean you look at a guy like tetsu naito doesn't have the greatest physique in the world as far as let's say kenny omega there's definitely some flab there i guarantee you tetsu naito can go 60 minutes with kenny omega i i agree to that you know i i don't i have no doubt in my mind um you look at an old man like Minoru suzuki 50 plus years old i don't know if he can hang 60 minutes anymore but I tell you what, right now I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt his toughness, yeah, nor his absolutely. want. <laughs> I understand I understand what Kenny Omega is saying. I I, I do. I, I when, now that I'm hearing that part, I and, and for the record, I never once I'm not one of those people that said that, that was a racist remark. I'm just confused by why why the call out like that. And again, I'm not behind the scenes. We're not a behind the scenes podcast, so we're speaking on a fan's point of view. So. There's a lot that Kenny Omega is, is saying that I I can't speak on behalf. I don't know what's going on back there. I don't know, you know, who's doing what and, and who's training for what. I will say this. The passion's got to be there. The want's got to be there. You know, we let's look at it. Let's put it in perspective as the WWE, for the WWE Universe to understand everybody's favorite era the attitude era whether you were the best wrestler or not you look at anybody that talks about that era everybody was hungry everybody wanted to outdo the next guy and whether they did it or not is it's not the point they they wanted to you know whether you were stone cold or the rock or if you're somebody like mark henry and the godfather there was that want that I wanted to be the best guy on on, on, on the card. You know, you saw that, with, especially with the younger talent, like the guys like, like Edge and Christian and the Hardys and what they were willing to put themselves through, too, to get over in, in, in a world where it was all about Triple H and The Rock and Stone Cold and Undertaker and all those guys. They wanted you to remember their names. So that passion has got to be there, and maybe that's what he's he's saying here, where it's, he's not fully seeing it. Because you're on that, that verge now where you're trying to take a huge Japanese company and make it worldwide. There has to be that want to say, even if I'm not in the main event, even if I'm the opening bout, I'm going to work my damnness to make sure that I'm the best match on the card. I don't I don't know what else to make of it. I can only speak from personal experience on this, and I say that referring to my my nine to five. And for for the sake of of our podcast here, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep it short. But comparatively speaking, once upon a time, I had a New Japan roster, and I got to work with people like that, and. I don't have that anymore. I have a 205 Live okay. or, or like a fucking Monday Night Raw roster. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. sorry. And 
that's what I'm I'm stuck with, and I'm the only hungry one, or at least I feel that way. And <laughs> believe me, those of you who know me, you know I'm not bullshitting, and 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 my body's taking the brunt of it, unfortunately. That's where I understand Kenny Omega. Yeah, he wants it, but I think what he's missing here is he doesn't realize that not everyone is going to be as hungry as you. Especially if they don't have to be. The other part of the problem with this whole situation is he is a for- he's absolutely right. He is a foreigner who's working in New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is system based. They have their own internal farm system of, of guys. Mm-hmm. They don't look out. They they traditionally don't look outward for homegrown talent. They don't make stars usually out of people from outside their system. Right. So a lot of this is very systematic, and people do fall in line because that's the system that is present. Right. So you go from being young boy to mid Carter to eventual star. It takes time, but there's a process, there's a certain process that follows. And once you're there, you just kind of do, you, you, you're there for that company. You don't usually go and wrestle anywhere else. Now that's changing. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of that roster doesn't necessarily understand that, hey, this is the future of professional wrestling that's happening now where, guess what? you are probably going to do Ring of Honor shows throughout the year on top of your New Japan schedule. Yeah. Or as part of your New Japan schedule. Or now, with the addition of Ishimori to an Impact Wrestling pay-per-view coming up, I believe it's Slammiversary, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be Slammiversary in the month of July. So we're a month away from that happening. So now not only is Ishimori available to Ring of Honor, he's also available to Impact on top of his New Japan dates. So that is something relatively new to a very system-based situation in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah. And so I'm not defending any of those guys, but I could see where... Their mentality is set, oh, hey, I only have to go do this, this, and this, and it be enough. It's it's a, it's a tough call. I, I never is, I yeah. never took this as him being racist either. No, no, I, 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 don't, I don't get that one quite. I, I don't either. I really don't. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see why Kenny Omega would be. I mean, he's, he's, helped, he's helped mold that company right. to what it is. Um, you know, I mean, I, I he's not one of those guys, that, at least I don't believe he is, that does it for a paycheck. Because if that was the case, he would be in Stanford, Connecticut a long time ago. Exactly. Uh, hopefully he never goes there. That's a whole <laughs> other topic, though. But, you know, with Kenny Omega, there's no doubt about that. He is one of the hardest, if not the hardest worker in professional wrestling today. And you're right. Yeah, you got to put that in perspective. They're they're still, even though they they are, they're moving the product to a more worldwide uh, audience. And again, you, you see that with the New Japan World, they still are a very traditional company, and that's very apparent that that's 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 always been the case with them. Maybe that's what needs to change. Maybe that's what needs to change first is the mindset of the company. So, therefore, you get your roster better prepared for what's about to happen. Because, you know, obviously you got New Japan dates. You know, not only is it you know, Ring of Honor and potentially Impact Wrestling, but you also have the partnership with CMLL. you got guys going down there. And then you have Rev Pro. You know, let's not forget that two champions in Rev Pro, based on UK and in England, are New Japan roster guys. Tomohiro Ishii, they're... He, he's still the heavyweight champion. And then Zack Sabre Jr. and Minoru Suzuki are still the tag champs. So they got to do those dates as well. So you're, the, the whole point of all this is to bring your you know make your product more known all over the world. And, and major parts, as far as wrestling goes, major parts of the world. Here in the United States, in England, and in which we've seen WWE doing that now. Going to England and, and Mexico. And 
it's smart business. But if that's the case, then yeah, you're you're going to have to change the philosophy a little bit. But you, I, I'm starting to see that though. I mean, again, I bring up Rapongi 3K. Those two dudes, those are workhorses right there. Workhorses to the T. Incredible shape. I know. I know. I know. Yo's much skinnier than Show, but he's still shredded for, oh, for, yeah. for, oh, for yeah. his size. The level of skill from last year when they were still the Tempura Boys to where they're at now, absolutely just a complete 180. And that's saying something because they were good back then too. I use those guys as an example because they're they're fresh. They're fresh from being young lions. They they were on excursion in Ring of Honor for for a while for about a year before making their return to New Japan as as Rapongi 3K, and that's the different mentality where you can send those guys anywhere in the world and they're going to give you high quality matches every single time. They're prepared for it physically. They have the endurance to do whatever match you want to do. High flying spots. You saw as you saw with the Young Bucks, uh, as far as uh, and as well as other opponents. Um, you know, Suzuki Goon most recently. And that's that's changed. So, you know, you, you see that with some of the younger talent. You know, some of the older guys, it's it's going to be like that. Kenny's got to understand that. It's going to be like that no matter where you go. Those older guys are setting their ways. You know, Tetsuya Naito, if he's one of those guys that was being called out in here, again, I know he didn't make it personal and call anyone individually, but... I bring him up because he's another guy that's super over, but not necessarily in the best, but not necessarily have the best looking physique in the world. He's not going to change at this point in his career, mid thirties, in the prime of his career. What's there to change? You're already over. <laughs> what, what is there to change? I understand it, and I, I, if I had to put one last thought on it. I would just say, I don't think it's a wake-up call. I just think it's just a challenge. A flat-out challenge, a fire, an ignition, if you will, to see what he can get out of, out of these uh, the, the guys on the roster because you're now at that point of no return if you're New Japan. You're ready to go to that next level. And you're already at that next level. Now you're, you know, you're here in the States, third time, third show. As of last year... They never did done their own show in the United States, you know, by themselves. And here we are, a year later, and this is number three for them. So that's a big deal, and that just shows what their product is going. So you have to be at your best. If that means going to the gym more, go to the gym more. Whatever it is, but you got to be at your best. Absolutely. That, I think that's my only gripe about the company right now is that they're about to go through growing pains and I really don't think they're fully prepared. You know, it's it's one thing to go and and, uh, and expand and grow. That's fine. But you have to be able to do that in, 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 an, in an exact right way. Because if you don't, you're going to fall on your face. Yeah. I'm not saying they're going to fall on their face. But if they're not careful, things are not going to go as well as they had hoped. And let's face it, uh, whether whether we like it or not, whether anybody likes it or not, the WWE is still a viable opponent in oh, yeah. in in the, on the business end of things because they're the biggest entity in the United States and globally at that. Yeah, and they, you know, like we just talked about earlier in the episode with the whole Madison Square Garden issue, they're still able to pull tricks out of their sleeve <laughs> that will make it very difficult for New Japan to operate here in the United States. And let's face it, that's where right now I think that's where the other professional wrestling mecca is is the United States. You know, WWE obviously has that advantage. You know, they can go to Japan and and sell out an arena pretty easily because they're the household name. Whether they're the best or not, they're a household name. They don't obviously come there that often. Yeah, and, they're not there very often. And, and it's just that major special attraction. New Japan isn't trying to be a special attraction. That's That's where they're at a disadvantage. One, they're not the WWE. They don't have that name. 
You know, we talked about in the show, you can be successful in the wrestling industry without the WWE moniker above your name. And that's true, but you have to be ready for it. You have to be ready to go and and prove yourselves, especially to an audience that wants something different but doesn't know exactly what they want. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like it's like somebody trying to find religion but doesn't doesn't know exactly what to think or believe. You're at that point where you all you have was WWE in your life. You know, and here you see, you know, as we're watching some more Ring of Honor stuff, we see Cody in a Bullet Club jacket. You're seeing all this Bullet Club stuff, and what is this? I want to see more of this. But you're not sure exactly what it is yet. You know, that's where, okay, all eyes are finally on you. You have to deliver. You have to deliver at all times. You know, this this G1 special in San Francisco, it's a big deal. This is a big show, just like it was last year. When they did uh, when they did it in Long uh, Long Beach, uh, it's a big deal. You have to be successful because if this doesn't work, who knows the next time you're going to be in the United States? You know, if this works, which I have every confidence this is going to do very well. I mean, they've already sold out, but as far as the the, the actual content, if it does well, you open up the doors to so many other places in the United States, so many other shows, and you're able to now have a second home. You know, again, you're not trying to be that special attraction where, oh, we're just we're just here just to do a, a fun show for you guys. But now it's, we're here, and we're here to give you our product, and we want you to come along on this journey with us. You know, whether we do shows in the Tokyo Dome or do shows, you know, here in the states, or anywhere in the world. We want you to come along. We're trying to sell you a product. That's the difference. Not having the big name, and trying to become that big name. And that's something that, that, that any company that is in WWE, that's where they're at the disadvantage. But if you're New Japan Pro Wrestling, you're not a brand new company like Ring of Honor, who people tend to forget. They're still in the teenage years of their existence. <laughs> you know, New Japan's been around since the seventies and they're they're now ready to finally become a global company, especially in the world that we live in now, where you can have everything you want at, at a means of you know, click of a button. Take advantage of it. You're absolutely right. And if I was a stadium, I would be called the Tokyo Joe. <laughs> Uh, Thanks for catching that. <laughs> one, one, one last thing that I, I have to absolutely share with you. Yes, um, let's hear it. This week, so we are we're about fourteen days removed from Father's Day. Yeah, uh, I cele- celebrated Father's Day with my daughter. We went to the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago to see Disney's Pixar exhibit, which was highly awesome. If you happen to be out this way, please check it out. I think it's through September 1st. Oh, that's um, an important day. Yeah, that's <laughs> when All In is, is going to be here uh, in, in our neck of the woods. But uh, I digress. Um, there, You have to understand, uh, I mentioned my daughter because she's relevant to this conversation. <laughs> she's a wrestling fan. She is a fan of the Bullet Club. She's a fan of Cody. She loves Ring of Honor. She loves New Japan. She she loves the WWE, believe it or not. She's a huge fan of AJ Styles. Ask me how how it went on Father's Day. How'd it go? Because that was uh, money in the that bank. That was money in the bank. Yeah. And it was in Chicago. So, I explained to her. Didn't get tickets. It's not worth the time. Yeah. She understood that. Okay. I didn't even have to explain that to her. She's like, Dad, I know. She's a smart kid. Smart kid. So we get back from the exhibit. We finally get home. I give her the option. I said, hey, we're about 20 minutes into Money in the Bank, but do you do you want to watch it with me? Like That'll be like the last thing we do for the day before we go to bed. We'll sit and we'll watch wrestling for two, three hours, call it a night. Yeah. 
She says, you know what, hold on, get, you know, let me, let me go get settled and, and home and everything, and then, you know, I'll, I'll come back and we'll, we'll maybe, maybe we'll watch Money in the Bank. So, I go about my business, I put on Money in the Bank, and I'm watching it, and I'm watching match after match after match, still no daughter. Okay. Like, where is this kid? <laughs> so, um... Again, huge AJ Styles fan. Can't wait to see AJ Russell, whether it be on TV, pay per view, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> His match comes on. You know, I let her know, hey, AJ's fighting. Nothing. I get nothing. Okay. Finally, about three quarters of the way through the match, she comes flying downstairs, laughing her ass off. And I was like, "What? what's so funny? I don't understand. She's like, I got to show you what, what I learned. Okay. So for those of you who are are, are familiar with memes on the internet, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's uh, one that involves a kid with a recorder. Do you know what a recorder is? Yeah. Like, like I, flutes? I have one back in elementary. Most, so. most of us did, at least out in our neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, a recorder is uh, like a flute-like instrument. And this kid learned to play the recorder with his nose. But not just any old uh, song. He learned to play John Cena's theme music <laughs> with, in his no- in with his, his nose, nose with yeah. the recorder. So she comes flying downstairs laughing her ass off because that's what she was doing this whole time. The entire time Money in the Bank was on, the entire time her favorite wrestler, AJ Styles, was on, what was she doing? Learning to play the recorder with her nose. With her nose. John Cena's theme music at that. She knows I can't stand John Cena. So that made it even funnier to her. How does this relate to the podcast? I think it fucking speaks volumes about how you have such a passionate fan for your product. But we're at that point where you're taking top stars and top talent throughout mm. the wrestling industry. Yeah. And reducing them to to shit to the point where my daughter would rather go play a fucking instrument with her nose than watch you wrestle. And on that note, we're going to end the show this week. Check us out on YouTube. We need YouTube subscribers. There's going to be plenty of more following contest fantasy booking coming up. Here in the next few weeks, absolutely. We've we've got uh, we got tons of stuff. Planned we've got with that. tons of oh stuff. My God. We had to cut ourselves short of the last recording. Just yeah, that was so that was pretty stuff. crazy. But um, catch us on YouTube. You can go to our website twenty x twenty crew dot com and check us out there. YouTube, you can go twenty x twenty crew dot com slash podcast slash YouTube. It'll take you right to our YouTube yeah, page. Subscribe. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's most important for us. Looking for 50 subscribers. We're still, giveaway. we're still doing the giveaway. 50 subscribers is what we need for, for this to uh, to happen. So hit that subscribe button. Even if you don't do YouTube, trust me, we're going to surprise the hell out of you in the next couple months. Yes. Uh, we're available on Twitter. Hate tweet us at 20x20crew. Yes, bring it on. You can also check us out on Instagram at 20x20crew. Facebook.com slash groups slash 20x20talk is where we uh, we talk to uh, most of the podcast fans. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, and then again, our, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash 20x20crew. With that said... Before we go, oh, I just want to say one thing real quick here. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to one of the greatest big men who ever stepped into the ring. We lost a great one this month. Uh, it will always be Vader time. Rest in peace, Vader. Thank you for all the great memories you've given every wrestling fan that ever watched you. Uh, catch all of his stuff via the WWE Network, New Japan World. Yeah, you can catch... Much better stuff on New Japan World, in my opinion. Yeah, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I just... Rest in peace, Vader. Definitely going to be missed. Definitely rest in peace. You know, the, the first time I ever... First time I ever saw him wrestle was uh, NWA WCW television, and he came out with that fucking helmet. Oh, and the shoulder pads. Yeah, 
that scared the ever loving yeah. shit out of me as a kid. Oh my god! And he had it rigged to where it would shoot out the steam through mm-hmm. the. Oh my god! Yeah, that was fucking scary. I was scared of that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> An absolute legend, and uh, I just hope you're at peace now. And then with that, again, always, as always, hashtag support professional wrestling, support the heels, support the baby faces if you have to. <laughs> and on that note, until next week, we will see, see you, you in, in the, the ring. ring.